This conference is brought to you by CallStack, your React and React Native development experts. Six releases a year. That's our goal for 2025. We're going to do them one every two months. And we're going to ship them like clockwork. My name is Jorge Cohen. I'm a software engineering manager on the React team at Meta. And I work with these wonderful people. You've probably seen them all over GitHub on the projects you care about and enjoy, like uh, Metro, New Architecture, React Native DevTools, and React DevTools. They also work on a bunch of other stuff. If you see them around, give them a like. Today, we're going to talk about the changes we have made to the React Native release process in 2025 and how that's going to make your upgrading life much easier and maybe even boring. I don't know. You tell me. And yeah, let's talk about upgrades. Unfortunately, React Native upgrades had a bad reputation. These are just some of the things that we heard from all of you using React Native over the years. Yeah, no, not super great, I guess. And um, it just takes a quick search on Reddit to actually show you uh, countless of posts of people complaining, asking for help, sharing their upgrade stories. Um, this is an actual list. I've recorded this this morning. Okay, there's also uh, memes all over the place. You guys are really funny about it. Um, here's just a few examples. How many of you can relate to that? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> is, is this one? Okay. Fine. I guess it's fine, okay. Uh, some of you had some creative feedback. I, I mean, <laughs> chirp. Okay, I guess. But please, don't forget to keep it friendly. Actual people work on these, on these technologies. Um, yeah. How many of you have used ChatGPT to upgrade a React Native project? No? No hands? OK. Good thing, because it's not really that helpful. And it likes to rub it in. Like, really. Anyway, what made these upgrades so painful? Well, here's the truth. Our release process wasn't optimized to the way React Native was evolving. And it didn't take into account the fast-paced advancements and improvements that we've been making. But more importantly, we were creating our own problems. And I want to show you some of our release process and explain uh, what happens behind the scenes. So it all starts with our release crew. These are people you see at the top of every release blog post. They're dedicated to managing each release. This release crew is made up of people from across the community and Meta employees. And you got representatives from Expo, Microsoft, Dream 11, and others. Their main job is to cut the release branch and create the RC, the release candidate. And it all starts with RC0, the very first one. Now, a release candidate, or a release, release branch, isn't something special. It's just whatever Git was pointing to at the time. We take that, and we set it aside. There's nothing special about it. But once we set it aside, we cut the branch, we test it. Each RC was tested manually, with uh, each problem or issue that would occur, we would fix it, create a new RC, and keep going. It's probably very familiar to some of you. RC zero. OK. But um, 
Oh, sorry. So we would fix all the fixes, uh, and we have GitHub projects to help us manage that. Now, this all looks pretty much like this. Uh, starts with a release crew. They do a release candidate. We test. If there's any issues, we fix them. We merge the changes back and pick the requests. And we do another candidate, test it again. And if it's all good, we ship. Cool, right? So we were shipping just two releases a year. And think about it. That's six months of changes. Six months. Six months. And with that came an avalanche of bugs, breaking changes, late fixes, fixes, whatever. It all came in. And to make things worse, we didn't have a clear criteria for accepting late fixes. So every fix that would come in late would block a release, create a discussion, and uh, whether it was needed or not, and it was critical or not. And this, uh, this made it so that we ended up with multiple RCs. Now, we usually try to stabilize a release within four RCs. That's one week of an RC, four weeks. But we were running into some releases that were doing six or nine. That's two months of work to release one React Native release. And when we have more time between releases, there's more changes in each release. And when there's more, more changes in each release, there's less stability for each release. So we were stuck in this vicious cycle. We had six months of changes. We had more bugs and breaking changes for each one of these releases. That took longer to stabilize. And even less frequent releases uh, resulted. And this cycle kept going on and on and on. Now, this not only made our work harder, this also made that you had to pay a price. You had delayed releases, and you had harder upgrades. So in order to break that cycle, our solution was fairly simple. We took our two releases a year, and we turned them into six. Simple enough. But this six is just a number. The real change was our approach to releases. And it's all based on three core principles that we set out. Releases have to be on time, less manual, and tested early. Now let me show you what that means to you. Remember what we talked about acceptance criteria and how we didn't have it for late changes? Well, we have a clear set of criteria now. And each change that wants to go into a release needs to apply to all of these. It's quite a few. Nothing can be merged in without adhering to these criteria. And even better than that, we have a bot. And this bot reminds you of what the rules are when you try to put something into a release. Now, this whole process made things a lot smoother and set expectations from the get-go. And that prevented a lot of unnecessary blocking of releases. We also started relying more heavily on feature flags. Feature flags are values that determine the behavior of specific parts of React Native. Think about them as uh, little switches that can turn certain features on or off. And that meant that if we found a problem in one of the features that we were trying to ship, we could just turn it off instead of trying to fix it in crunch time. This all resulted in our new release schedule. We ship a release every two months, no exceptions. And while there's unexpected things that might happen, we're committed to making this schedule as reliable as possible. So you can plan accordingly. No surprise releases. The full schedule is public on this new page on reactnative.dev. So you can see what's going on. OK, so releases are on time, right? Now let's see how they're less manual. Humans, <laughs> humans are awesome. We all know that, uh, despite the AIs. But we do make mistakes. And uh, this one is one of my favorites. We, uh, we once shipped version 1,000 to NPM, uh, embarrassingly enough. Yes, you heard it right, 1,000. Um, 
hard to explain, but happened. Uh, this was a release crew member that accidentally typed something wrong, and bam, it went out. Whatever. It's two years ago, yeah? But this was one of the catalysts to us trying to automate things as much as possible. We rebuilt our entire CI around GitHub Actions. And that means that we have minimal steps that are done manually. And this helped us deal with all um, the late changes and fixes. We do this with our new bot that helps us merge, pick, and manage tasks for us. This means that the time spent by the release crew dropped from two days per RC to two hours. That is a lot of hours that don't turn into human errors in your code base. And it made us to have fewer mistakes and more predictable outcomes. So things are less manual now. Good job, right? Let's see how it's tested early. So on top of the manual tests that we used to do before, we now run full end-to-end -end maestro tests, just like the one you're seeing here. And it's running on RN Tester, our development app. RN Tester includes almost all of React Native's features in one app. And we aim to make these end-to-end -end tests as extensive as possible. That way, we can cover most of RN's core components. And the best part is, this is running on every commit. So, Every time something breaks, we know about it, way ahead of a release. And earlier this week, we've introduced the React Native nightly testing program. Um, we test some ecosystem libraries against our nightly builds. And that way, we can catch breaking changes early on and make sure that the popular libraries that you use uh, keep working across React Native releases. This means that by the time a release gets to you, it already has been tested with the ecosystem you actually use. We even have this public dashboard. You can go online and look it up to check whether your favorite library works with the latest React Native. And thank you, CMAC, for building this for us. So how do we pick the libraries we test? Well, the first batch is unpicked, of course, artisanal. Uh, but we're, we're looking for other libraries to add. And you can join with a PR. We're looking for actively maintained with, ten, with 100 stars or more, with 50K downloads that only has native code. If your library is JavaScript only, it won't be covered by this program. You can go on these two URLs to see more. OK. So we're on time. We're less manual, and we're now tested early. Let's recap. We're on time with two releases, with one release every two months. The releases are less manual and released faster with fewer errors, and they're tested early across the ecosystem, unlike the layout of this slide. <laughs> so our next release is 082. The RC branch cut was a day or two ago. And the release is about to go out in four weeks. My ask to you is don't stay behind. How many of you are using the latest React Native 81? Hands? There's like a few. If you're not on 81, you're missing on Android 16 support and pre-compiled iOS builds making your apps up to 10 times faster. If you're not on 080, you're missing on more accurate TypeScript API, pre-built iOS dependencies, and our legacy architecture is frozen. If you're not on 79, your app is definitely fa uh, slower and your developer experience too, because we've added faster Metro startup and faster Android startup. If you're not on 78, you're missing two of the most game-changing additions to React Native ecosystem, React 19 and the React compiler. We've added new styling features in 77 and introduced the new architecture as default in React Native DevTools, our new React Native debugger, 
and 076. Please, don't stay behind. You're missing out. Another important thing to remember is our support window. We support the latest three releases, which gives you six months to upgrade. You have clear deprecation timelines and no surprises. Six months is plenty of time. Now, we already shipped five releases this year, and the community definitely noticed. Here's a little piece from uh, the Bytes newsletter. Uh, they're calling out our new pace, and uh, they have some weird assumption about my team, but whatever. And of course, there's a first-hand experience from some people you uh, know firsthand. And yes, this particular upgrade was only eight files. It's kind of boring, huh? OK, so this year we're setting the foundations. We have releases that are on time, they're less manual, and they're tested early. And when upgrades are routine, and when breaking changes are rare, when you trust the process, everything is possible. But you know what? Maybe not today. <laughs> but in all seriousness, 1.0 is on the horizon. We're actively working on clearing the path towards it. And our efforts on predictable releases, stable APIs, and reduction of breaking changes are all contributing to a stable 1.0. We hope to share more of our plans on this soon. OK. So to summarize, we're shipping six times a year instead of two. Releases are on time, less manual, and tested early. The full schedule is on reactnative.dev, and we'd love to get your feedback. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll be around here. I would love to hear your upgrade stories and experiences. Thank you.